I want to talk to you guys a little bit about our big topic this week. And our big topic this week is what is one thing that you would change about Niceville? And here's why I asked this. Okay. <clears throat> um, either in the past or in the future, I'm not telling you because I don't want somebody to rob my house while I'm gone. Mm -hmm. I will have or did uh, have a conversation with our favorite folks over at Strong Town. Sent them yes. an email because I am either going or have gone to Brainerd, Minnesota, the home of Strong Towns. And I'm, so I sent them off an email. I was like, hey, guys, I'm coming to Brainerd. That you're and uh, I was like, hey, boys, uh, could we like do a little interview? And they're like, por que no? Like, so not? hopefully we will have a interview with the Strong Towns people. And uh, Paul, you, you do the spiel a little bit better than I do, but can you explain what Strong Towns is and what they are trying to do? Sure. So it's uh, really a revitalization effort of um, small towns um, or good sized towns even. Uh, but basically taking um, orphan property, uh, taking uh, areas that aren't being utilized with their highest and best use um, and trying to redevelop them for the betterment of the community. And uh, it's a movement uh, that started uh, through some folks up in Brainerd. And did I say that right? Brainerd. Yeah. Brainerd, yeah. Um, and they've had a series of books. They have a nonprofit organization. They have a lot of learning materials. They have a new book out. They do have a new book. I've read two of the, maybe their four or two of their three books. Um, and a lot of the things that uh, I think are happening in Niceville or will be happening in Niceville over the, over the course of the next few years are in alignment with that book. And so um, it's uh, hugely exciting to, to be here in sort of Niceville's history. Um, where we're starting to see some of these uh, things come to fruition. Um, and we're doing it the old-fashioned way, too, um, with the addition of Deer Moss Creek and, and new development. Um, but it's really important to focus on the areas that we already have um, that are derelict um, and need to be revitalized. So to my question, now that we've yes. talked about what Strong Towns is and kind of yep. what the idea is to revitalize uh, towns to almost like um, – one of the great things in the book is they show like the old pictures of the old towns. And it was like, hey, remember we just built this thing from the town up? And it yeah. has like the old downtown drag and all the stores and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, if you could change one thing about Niceville, only one, right? What would it be? Hmm. Well, I have two. Um, Look at this guy. Can that... Well, I think the... <laughs> <laughs> I think the first one would be, I know, I can't stick to the big topic where we said it was only going to be one thing. Um, I, would I, say, I, can. I would say the first thing is just to have a, uh, a community that has a third, uh, a third way of making money. Um, we're heavily leaning on military and we're heavily leaning on tourism. Um, and it would be fantastic for our children to have the opportunity to, to live here and grow up here. Uh, with a third leg to that stool. Live here, grow up here, and stay here. Correct. Yeah. And, and a lot of people for generations have felt that you have to leave here mm -hmm. and then figure out a way to get back. Um, so it would be nice if we had one of those. Do we want to talk more about that or do you want to hear? <clears throat> I, want, I want to talk. I want to hear more about that because that was mine, first of all. Um, mm -hmm. A very similar thing. But I think that there's another piece of that. Uh, which I would say is the revitalization of that little C – I wish we could have the CRA f district finished tomorrow if I could pick you know, one thing besides having a third industry that comes in. But I think what we might need to do to explain a little bit more because um, I don't think Strong Towns is about like government mandating that we have a third industry. But how does, how does the thing that we do with the Strong Towns mentality change, uh, change us so that we have a third industry? How do those things work together? So that's a good question. So I think there's some holes that like Niceville, Valpy need to fill. Um, and these are very similar problems to just the counties in general. Mm -hmm. um, is that housing is, is an issue. We have an overabundance of single family homes and we don't have um, smaller square footage housing options uh, so that folks, because smaller square footage is more affordable, mm -hmm. right? So. If, uh, and it's a better bang for your buck tax-wise. Yeah. If, if Mr. Morello wanted to hire a new teacher from FSU, brand new FSU grad or West Florida grad or, you know, the Superior College of the University of Florida Here it goes. Um, to work at his school, <laughs> Just uh, you know, they're going to make forty grand a year, right? What? They're going to make forty grand a year. And it's well, hard. the FSU people might make fifty, but yeah. No. That's not how that works. But anyway, but anyway. But anyway <laughs> I'll just you be know, drinking my jar of Coke Zero yeah. here. Continue, please. Yeah, I will. Um, but it would be nice if they had a, like a one bedroom apartment that was available for them, right? They're just mm -hmm. starting off life 
they had a one bedroom apartment that was in Niceville um, that they could you know afford that was a thousand twelve hundred bucks a month um, they wouldn't have to live in Fort Walton or they wouldn't have to live even further north um, and they could be part of our community and continue to serve our kids right and there's lots of examples of that you know, we want more nurses to live here we want more um, you know firefighters and police officers and first responders um, to live here and so that's that's where the strong town mentality has uh, an opportunity to really help us because we do have some uh, areas where we could put in um, you know smaller square footage of housing and it's very pocketed but we have to and we have to choose our opportunities when uh, when they come to fruition small bets yeah and make the small bets um, and that small bet philosophy of of taking advantage of individual scenarios is exactly what strong towns is about as well so one of the things that I think you brought up about like you know the <clears throat> having people in town yeah. the 40% of the city's workforce lives in the city. That means 60%, three in five city employees in Niceville do not live in the city. Right. I'm sure most teachers do not live in the city. I'm sure that most people um, just starting out that have more free time on their hands uh, than maybe somebody like me who's watching them kids right. um, has. What if we were able to, instead of having them live in Crestview or in Freeport, and driving an hour each way every day. What if we gave them back two hours a day? How much could they do for our community, right? Because sure, or just be part of the community, <clears throat> or you even know, that. Yeah, you know, I don't. I know everyone who lives here has had the experience, especially if you have kids, of like your kids running into their teacher mm -hmm. at you know Publix or um, Third Planet or wherever. Kids um, getting crazy. <laughs> no, no, would, there's kids options there. Yeah, but there's, it would be it would be nice if that happened even more often because the you know the more uh, junior uh, teachers and stuff could could live here and be around here, um, and I think that just sort of strengthens the base uh, to to further build upon. And um, I don't know. I think the CRA is going to do what the CRA does, which is fantastic, and, and may take a little while to do. And then you have pockets where you know Deer Moss Creek is going to have its own little downtownish type feel, um, city center type feel, and then you know Third Planet has already turned into the unofficial like you know, city watering hole and city center for a lot of activity. And um, what we're trying to do at Central Parton is in, is in alignment with that. Um, and so I think I think you're just going to see pockets. And I think that's exactly the way that we're going to have to tackle it just because of how we're structured and how many different landowners own what pieces of what. Um, but I think over the next five, ten years, I'm super bullish on those things, uh, making the town an even more incredible place to live. Yeah, and I think that having the plan in place to do these little bets, right, and not totally relying on the CRA, for yeah. example, which I think is a great kind of like starting hub catalyst sort of thing. Yeah. Not having all these things, right, gives us a sense of community that people do want to come back to, right? That's right. Because when my daughter in, oh gosh, 13 years goes to college, you know, she might be gone forever. You know, she might say, right. well, I really like Jacksonville or Tampa or right. Miami or Atlanta. And she'll leave. And I'd love for her to at least have the opportunity to come back to something, right? And I think that all these things are intertwined. Everything from having affordable housing to having a third type of something in the economy, whether it's, you know, tech or computer science-based stuff mm -hmm. or um, having a job at the Shoal River Ranch up in Crestview doing manufacturing stuff. Right. Uh, all those things have to be intertwined. And if we don't do it right now, it's not going to happen for our kids. And my hope is, is that we will get on board and make the changes necessary with our with our local governments, with uh, the way that we do business, the way that we attract business, um, how we deal with the the working the working class, as it were. So people that are starting out, um, you know, your your patrol officers, your yeah. new firefighters, all yeah. these people that come in, um, and a little pitch for next Monday, my story about Alice and how all this stuff, everything from daycare to uh, affordable housing kind of conspires against bringing people in to those entry-level jobs right. here in Niceville. Right. So be on the lookout for that. Um, <clears throat> but that's it's all a little piece of that, right? And if we can tackle those little pieces one by one, then hopefully we will have a a more accessible Niceville, right? Absolutely. You want the person checking you out at Publix and the person who cuts your hair and the 
person who teaches your kids and the you know the person who shows up for a you know a nine one one call to be people that you would see at church and people that you would mm-hmm. see in your community. So, yeah. absolutely. And then I guess on my side, my my one thing that I could have besides that, his is better. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to see the CRA finished today if I could. Right, I, I know they're working on it and it's a process and it's it just takes a while, right? But I'm not patient. Um, <clears throat> all that to say that I think that that thing can be a real catalyst to bring a really strong downtown area to build in that density for multifamily mm-hmm. housing, to build in the density for a row of shops that has all local, you know, owners, you know, yeah. because that brings in more tax revenue for the city. It's it's in the city's best interest to have the third planets of the world and the yeah. um, well, Cafe Bienvilles. Sure. Well, I mean, the... They, the city made a small bet. Mm-hmm. Like, you could look at Turkey Creek as a perfect example. Yes. Right? Like, they started with the boardwalk, and, you know, they lengthened things, and they, they did a great job. Now they've added the canoe and uh, landing area and stuff, and I think there's a plan to even extend uh, a second boardwalk area off mm-hmm. uh, in the other direction. Um, and so, you know, and then we put, uh, you know, I know Amanda Grandy and a few other people had a lot to do with this, but put, we put that nice little wall up right there. Mm-hmm. Um, buy it as well. And so I think um, that small bet uh, philosophy works. And some people don't even realize we've been doing it already. Yeah. So, so that is, of course, the optimistic, hopeful, exciting, great place to be that is Niceville. So yeah. this is not a knock. This is not like we want to change things in Niceville because it's bad. No, we, I think it's heading in the right direction. It's already heading in the right direction. But if nobody's there encouraging it, nobody's mm-hmm. being a cheerleader, mm-hmm. then no bueno. Perfect. All that was right. a good segment, man. That was good. That was fun. Yeah.